Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Mini Prince fourth birthday broadcast. I can't believe it's been four years. Let's let's burn something. Let's see if this is going to work. Oh, 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 there we go. Woo! These things do spark. I thought we should have a sparkler because it just seemed like an appropriate thing to do. And I've got fire suppression right here because it's not a broadcast without a fourth birthday man these things spark mini prince is about to catch on fire hi everybody good evening floyd good evening lynn good evening trackside mike good evening steve these things are not safe good evening almar good evening uh lynn mccurdy grandpa rails who else is here that was Fun and dangerous. That's the first and last time I am ever going to light anything on fire on the air. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, I think Wigwag was the first one in. Steve, we will get to your question in a minute. And boy, do we have beers of the night tonight. We've got special birthday beers. And uh, let's see. We've got, I think this is an absolute record uh, for the number of people who have joined a live stream, and this is going to be quite the live stream tonight. Besides the fact that it is, yes, over there, our fourth birthday, and we've got balloons, and I just burned something, which, <laughs> yeah, doesn't smell really great in here. Um, we have a record number of people in, and we've got an amazing, amazing show uh, for everyone tonight. We have two 
very special guests. One is right there, all the way from Australia, where it's currently, I guess, about nine in the morning. And then we got another one right there, uh, who is from just down the road. Uh, and you will see both of them very soon. Uh, but before uh, I introduce them, uh, I want to... <laughs> I see someone say careful there. And I think that was probably referring to uh, to the birthday sparklers. Um, before we go any further, as you all know, every broadcast starts with picking the beer. So let me share the beer selection with you. Uh, and I'm kind of excited a little bit about this one, this uh, month's uh, beer selection. Uh, here we go. And I, there I am. Okay. So we've got four beers from Henderson's across the street. That's the brewery across from me. Um, the first one is called Sunblock. It's a black lager. Uh, it is absolutely delicious. It's probably the favorite beer uh, that I have tasted from them. And this one's kind of neat because if you can see on the label right there, it's a special solar eclipse. So on April 8th, 2024, at approximately 1.52 p.m., slip into the darkness of, or sip into the darkness of Southern Ontario's first total solar eclipse of the sun in uh, 45 years with this totally tasty and refreshing German-style black lager. This is good. Uh, they've run out of cans. They only have it on tap, but here's a really fun a uh, little uh, story about this beer. Um, I bought four of them because I knew I'd like it. And if you bought four of them, you got a free uh, pair of Solar Eclipse glasses. So that's the first beer. The second beer is one called SWAT. And this is funny. I'm not going to read the whole story because we'll be behind before I even start. But this beer... Uh, I'll read you a little bit of the story behind this one. You know that... Um, Henderson's usually this is a, also a this is a black IPA. Uh, there seems to be a theme here, dark beers, I guess. Um, this one uh, is another one in their IBE series where they do fun stories like this Toronto Circus riot that you've seen on the end there. And the story on this one goes: In 1912, flies were considered the cause of much disease in the city, and the extermination was seen as a way to reduce disease. So the Toronto Star, the newspaper, held a contest to see who could kill the most flies. Uh, the prize was 50 bucks, which is over $1,500 in today's. And the winner was Beatrice White, a 15-year-old teenager who was determined to collect the money to pay for her music lessons. In short, she ended up killing 3.5 million flies in this contest. So this is a beer commemorating that story. I believe you've seen five pin. Oh, and yeah, I told you it's uh, what it was. Five pin is a light lager, 4% alcohol. I think this is the one I drank last month, but this is uh, bowling might be considered a pretty easy and relaxing way to spend some fun. But at the turn of the 20th century, that was not the case. There were those who felt that bowling was too strenuous an activity. Oh, I don't remember reading this actually. Did I read this? Anyway. Um, so in 1909, Trontonian Tommy Ryan invented a game that's still only played here in Canada, five-pin bowling. Okay, so it's a Canadian invention of five-pin bowling, light lager. And then we've had this one prominently featured before. This is the Circu Circus Riot, 9% extra strong imperial old ale. And this commemorates, and if you don't remember, if you haven't seen the story on this one, tune in a couple broadcasts ago. Because basically the circus clowns from out of town and the firefighters both ended up at the same brothel in 1855, I think it was. Uh, and only one group could avail themselves of the evening. And there was a riot that broke out between circus clowns and firefighters. So that's the story on that one. All good stories, all good beers. Uh, please vote whether I'm drinking the Sunblock, the SWAT, the Five Pin, or the Circus Riot. 
and then we will get on with the show. So what do we have here? We've got a five pin, says John Garvin. Sunblock says Grandpa. Steve says Sunblock. Glenn says Sunblock. Trackside Mike says hello, Ray. Uh, Possum Bayou says he has an antique beer can collection. That's very cool. Uh, Dave says to go with Sunblock because it's timely, and I agree. Uh, Dan, I like the way you think. And we're going to be talking about you, Dan, as well as you as well, Dave, in a few minutes. Uh, Jeff, the Rush beer, tons of Rush beer across the street. Uh, but I have had a lot of Rush beer. And I always try and feature what's new. I do get a welding shield, a free welding shield uh, with the sunblock. And it looks to me, hello, Jerry. It looks to me. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink one that kills flies that's a very good point trackside mike and i did make a fly for um april fools two years ago all right well ladies and gentlemen roger cook you have the last well and so does collaborators. it's everybody saying sunblock and welcome i can't believe this is thank you so much everyone for uh for spending this wonderful time together sunblock is the winner I will pour the sunblock into my lovely glass here, and then we will get the show on the road. Black lager, this is good. Um, if anybody is in the Toronto area and would like to stop by Miniature Printerland in the next week, I will take you across the street. That was not a very good pour. I will take you across the street for a pint of sunblock. All right. Cheers. Crappy pour, but a great beer. Mm, and I get a beer mustache. Yum. All right. Let's get on with the show. Speaking of beer, and I'm not quite done with beer yet. Let me add the show back in. Here we go. Um, I'm happy the first announcement of the night is that Henderson, the brewery that I just drank a beer from across the street, uh, is the official sponsor, the official brewery of Miniprint. So I, I walked across the street for two years. I've been drinking their beer on air, and I, I kind of know the owner through passing. Anyway, I walked in, and I told him I drink four of your beers on air, will you sponsor me? And he said, yes. And I said, I don't want beer because I buy beer and I want to support the brewery. But I would like to say that you are the official brewery of Mini Prince. And I would love to get some swag to give away. So next month, tune in. I will have a whole bunch of things from Henderson uh, to give away. And we'll have some sort of contest or draw. And yeah, I guess I got, I got my very first sponsor. Um, I have sponsored many events, which I will talk about in a couple of slides. Uh, but yes, Mini Prince has a beer sponsor. Um, and what that means is tune in uh, next month. I will have some uh, clothing, hats, mugs, coasters, whatever, uh, from the beer across the brewery across the street uh, to give away. Funny you should mention that, Steve, because the other thing I wanted to talk to them about was they do all these really neat beers. So I was wondering if they would do a mini Prince beer or a Junction Triangle Railway beer for me. Because we are, if you remember, and I think most of you know, um, we are in the middle of a triangle surrounded by trains. And I would very much like to do a mini Prince Junction Triangle train beer. And I asked him, how many cans do you need to do a special brew? And he said 700. And I thought, okay, I can do 700 cans of beer. Uh, not a problem. <laughs> well, not personally. But then I said, is there any way to ship this stuff? And he said, no, it can only be sold here. So unless 700 of you want to come and visit, or unless Sparky wants to do a YouTube meet and greet uh, up here, uh, I'm afraid that my dreams of having a custom designed mini Prince Henderson beer is going to have to wait until I figure out how we can get rid of 700 cans of the stuff, but it's, you know, it would be fun, wouldn't it? So welcome Henderson as the official brewer tune in next month. And I will be more than happy to hopefully have some swag to give away. 
And speaking of swag, this is the big birthday party, and we have uh, a fantastic uh, contest where we have some prizes to go away, four amazing prizes, uh, which we'll probably do at about 8 o'clock. Um, I'm going to ramble on for a few more minutes with some things that are new and exciting. Uh, and <laughs> I'm going to put up comments like this from Lynn McCurdy. You've seen me after one beer with this broadcast. Can you imagine 700? I think it would be fun to get 700 cans, but I would need all of you to come up and drink it with me. Um, yeah, that's the other idea. We could have an AML barbecue. Uh, that's a great idea. Hi, Bruce. How are you? Uh, 700 cans uh, of Mini Prince beer. Uh, and that would be, Steve, one heck of a live stream. I'm I'm really liking this idea. It's something, you know, you have to have dreams, right? And, and that is the Mini Prince dream. Um, speaking of dreams, and let me just change this a little bit. I want to go not like that. Maybe like that? No. Where's my layout? Here we go. Oh, for heaven's sakes, why are you doing this? There we go. That's the layout I want. Um, announcement number one, and this is where uh, some familiar faces come in. Dave, that is Dave, uh, who you saw on the last broadcast, proudly sporting a Mini Prince t-shirt at the Franklin and South Manchester. I think Dan was on a little bit earlier. I am meeting Dan and I am meeting um, uh, uh, Dave uh, at the Franklin and South Manchester Railroad for their first open house of 2024, uh, which will be on April 20th. Uh, Mrs. Mini Prince and I um, are hopping in the car uh, and we're going to go to Peabody. Uh, if you are anywhere near the Boston area, if you are in Massachusetts, Connecticut, you wanna hang out, uh, I'm gonna be bringing the scanner uh, and I will be uh, hanging out um, and, you know, we can figure out where and when, but definitely uh, Saturday the 20th from nine till noon at the Franklin and South Manchester. I have been dreaming about getting back to that event, to that uh, fantastic uh, layout since I saw it at Springfield. And I would love to hook up uh, with anybody who is uh, who is in the area. Uh, welcome, go via or go home and don't go home, stay because we're just getting started. Um, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you everyone who's just come in. We picked the beer from my official sponsor, Sunblock is the beer. Henderson's is my sponsor. I've achieved my milestone on my fourth birthday. Not only have I burned something in here, I have a beer sponsor. So that is all good. Announcement number two or three or four. Some of you might recognize this gentleman. Uh, he's here in spirit, if not body. He is off uh, on a train event tonight, a planning session for the big double headers uh, railroad weekend, which is next, well, this coming weekend, which is a huge tour in... Uh, his neck of the woods, about an hour and an hour, hour and a half west of Toronto, where about, uh, gosh, probably about 50 different homes open up their layouts. And it's a fantastic tour. And uh, Sparky will have his layout open. Um, I believe that Sparky is going live uh, this Saturday. Um, Nick is in that neck of the woods, too, from ITLA. Uh, we'll have to ask him. Uh, about that because he is one of our guests that I will be bringing on uh, very soon. Uh, but Sparky is uh, doing some double header stuff tonight, or I know he would love uh, to be on uh, and talk about the YouTube meet and greet, which is the other big event. So April will be Peabody in Massachusetts, May 18th and 19th. Uh, Reading, Pennsylvania is Sparky's YouTube meet and greet. Um, I would love to give you all the details. 
Uh, all I can tell you is that I'm going, I'm staying in Reading. Uh, I will get there on the Friday, be there the Saturday, and I think come home the Sunday, or maybe I'm getting that wrong. Maybe I'll be there on the Thursday, stay the Friday, Saturday, come home Sunday, something like that. But I'll be bringing the scanner to that event as well. And I think uh, Sparky has set up a ride, some sort of uh, event that we can all do. And so check out Sparky's channel. Uh, if you're interested in that. Um, there's one more event that I want to talk about, but I'll talk about that in a little while. Some new and exciting things. Um, I hope you all know this model railroader, Pele, because he does some of the absolute most fantastic stuff. The reason I'm showing it to you is you should be aware he's got a great Facebook group called Pele Soberg Model Railroad Site. Uh, but Mini Prince was very, very thrilled uh, to see our new ice machine uh, as part of the diorama that he's built. And he's been a customer and bought a few things over the years. Uh, but this was a picture that he posted uh, that I wanted to share because have you ever seen something as realistic? Everything there is modeled with the exception of the sky. Apparently, he did Photoshop the sky in but everything else is, is true to life modeling. And that is just absolutely spectacular. Let me make it full screen so you can truly appreciate it. Oh, you got me. All right. So that was kind of fun. Oh yeah. I want to show a few little mini prints that we've released in the last month. Uh, thank you trackside Mike for, for showing that. Um, I don't know why it's important, but if you are watching on YouTube and you could hit the thumbs up, apparently that does something. I don't know if it does anything. I don't know why you would do it, but if you do it, apparently it's a good thing. Also, if you haven't joined the YouTube channel, uh, by all means, please feel free. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to join. Uh, I have all sorts of little fun things that I will post. Uh, let me look at a few uh, comments here before I go further. Will I be attending the Pittsburgh National Narrow Gauge Convention in September? Unfortunately, I will not mark, and I will tell you why in a minute, uh, because I'm attending a different event in September. Uh, so I've got pretty much one event a month for April, May, June, July, August, and September. And if I do more than one event, then nobody's running the machines. So September's event is uh, already unfortunately or fortunately booked. Trackside Mike says, if you hit thumbs up, it helps your videos go out to more viewers. Well, thank you, Trackside. Another reason to hit the thumbs up. So back to... That layout, that layout, you don't want me big. A couple of the mini prints that have uh, come out in the last month are the wonderful uh, boat trailer. Uh, this is, I believe, an 18-foot boat trailer. Uh, unbelievably detailed, available in HO scale, S scale, and O scale. Um, I'm absolutely in love with these tiny little surveillance cameras. And somebody suggested, I'm just looking to see if I have one handy. They're microscopic and they're so much fun. Oh yeah, here they are. They're microscopic and they are so much fun uh, to uh, put on buildings. Uh, somebody said that they look like uh, the rail cams that people you know, put up, the, the live viewing rail cams. Uh, so I'm sticking these on all sorts of buildings and things. They're, they're really fun. Uh, it's a detail that I saw walking to work because we're in an industrial area and everyone has these little modern surveillance cameras. Uh, and then, of course, probably one of the, the coolest mini prints, the, the bulk compactor, uh, which you can put up against your loading dock. Um, the boat trailer and the compactor uh, were excellently painted uh, by Mike H.O. Trains, who was invited to come on tonight. Uh, but unfortunately couldn't. Uh, Mike, who is unbelievably talented, 
uh, does all of our object painting. Uh, and I'm really happy to say that um, all of the objects, and I was on till midnight last night and spent all day the day before, pretty much all of our objects can be purchased painted. So there is a group of people that love to paint their own things. Uh, and some people actually do like to get their mini prints painted. So Mike does amazing painting. Steve, we have a number of boats. There are boats online and there will be more boats coming soon. So boats are, that boat right now is in the water, I guess, uh, but there will be more boats coming. What else is new in the last month? Oh yeah, um, somebody requested opossums, uh, which is one of the few animals I did not have. So we've added opossums. I had peeing dogs and I had fire hydrants, but it never occurred to me to put the two together. So that is now uh, something new. And then bottles and crates. So those are a few of the fun things that we've added in the last month. Um, I agree, David Green. I definitely need a fisherman. I have a list of scans that I need to do that is a mile long. And the issue is just simply timing. Um, uh, people asked for smoking figures, firefighters. I could have a lineup out the door. I could be body scanning 24 seven and, uh, and still, <laughs> and still not catch up. Uh, Bruce, whoops, Bruce, you are right. I have flat armadillos and I have flat deer and I have flat squirrels and I have flat raccoons. So I will definitely flatten an opossum for you if you would like one. Um, Michelle Kempema, welcome. And thank you for joining. I was actually looking back a year ago to the April 2023 broadcast. And that was the broadcast that you and Jen were guesting on. And it was the broadcast where I fondly looked back at the all the fun that we had on the first Colorado trip of last year. So I guess the Rocky Mountain train show must have been a little bit earlier last year. And it is absolutely killing me, metaphorically, uh, that I'm not going out to Rocky Mountain this year because it, 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 I think you guys are going to have so much fun. And I had invited uh, Chris Palmieri of Home Shops on uh, for this broadcast, uh, but he is actually on the way to the airport right now. Uh, and I suspect that uh, you will be seeing him very soon. That was so much fun. If anyone is going to the Rocky Mountain Train Show uh, this coming weekend, April, I guess, 5th, 6th, 7th, uh, in Denver, um, I envy you because it is so much fun. And here's a gentleman. Welcome, Adam. Uh, I can guess that you are going since it's in um, your backyard and have a fantastic time. I will be there uh, with you in spirit, if not in body. Uh, it is absolutely a wonderful show uh, that is is absolutely uh, worth going to. Uh, Trackside Mike, are you going to the Rocky Mountain Train Show? I did not know you were going to the Rocky Mountain Train Show. Or are you talking about uh, something else? What is in Stormy Sky's backyard? I have missed some things in the chat. Um, Stormy is 30 miles southwest of Milwaukee. And I... Oh, Train Fest. Yes, you're talking about Train Fest. I would love to go to Train Fest. I'm really interested in Train Fest. Uh, but it's brutally expensive like to get in and, and uh, um, uh, be an exhibitor. I think it might be beyond, uh, beyond my, uh, my capabilities. I looked at it and uh, because I need the large booth space, there was just no way, no way that I could afford it. All right, moving on because we are, as usual, behind schedule, and I want to bring on our next guest. Um, I should mention before I bring him on, and I will bring him on momentarily, uh, our birthday sale was set to end at midnight tonight. 
uh, but I have decided to extend it. So if you go to miniprints.com and you put the code PARTY at checkout, uh, you will save 20% off all regular priced mini prints, which are unpainted. So not the painted ones, but all unpainted mini prints uh, are 20% off. And if you order, if your order is $100 or more, I will throw in a free mini prints coaster, which I had kicking around, but I don't know, but that's what it looks like. And uh, I made a bunch of those for the Mini Prince of the Month Club. And I believe I have about 50 of them left over. So the first 50 orders over $100 gets a free coaster with the order. If you placed an order today that qualifies, I will retroactively, of course, include that. So, and that's $100 after the 20%. So if you were 100 bucks and then the 20% knocked it down to 80 bucks, you don't get a coaster. If you were 100 and whatever, and it knocks it down at 100 bucks, you get a coaster. All right. Painting. Let's talk about painting. Because I love to paint. And I think you guys know that painting is probably, I think, one of the most creative parts of the model railroading journey. Interestingly, it's one of the things that a lot of people don't enjoy doing. Um, it's my favorite part of the hobby. Um, I have, if you go to the miniprints.com website and you go to the very bottom, you'll see I've got painting clinics. I've got two painting clinics up, uh, one on painting animals and then another one that I did at the national convention uh, on painting figures. But the next gentleman who I'm about to bring on and I'm about to introduce is the best figure painter I've ever seen. And I have a special announcement. And the special announcement, let me, let, let, let me bring him on and then I'll show you the special announcement. I want to introduce you to someone. Are you there, Ian? I am. All right. Let, let's introduce you. Because this is exciting. Um, I is. am. This is the first time that we've actually ever met. It is. I mean, we've met online through the magic yeah. of the interweb. But who are you? Um, I'm an Australian. Uh, okay. I live a long way away from you guys. I've actually been to Toronto in 2011. Okay. I stayed in the uh, a certain place across from the Grand Central uh, the Fairmont. Yep. My claim for fame is I puked up in on the tenth floor in their rubbish bin. Excellent. So that's me. Um, I'm a figure painter. I have been since uh, 1981, so I am old. Um, basically, my father is well, so was a professional model maker. I okay. absolutely into to in train into trains since the 1940s. First doing O scale American. Then uh, went to Australian Queensland, which in S scale, which he was a pioneer of. So I'm a son of a modeler. Um, I didn't. I built models as a kid, and then I went into Formula One racing cars, and they had these big figures to paint, and I loved that. And it actually took over from me doing modeling, and I started to do figures. And then somebody introduced me to playing with figures, which is wargaming. Now, wargaming requires extreme detail. Uh, I was doing the polyonic, and they have oh, just so much detail. Um, so that's sort of my beginning. And then I started, I bought a house and I couldn't afford it. So I had to get work in and I started com doing commission work for people for wargaming because they, they, they don't want one figure. They want 150 figures. So I, I learned to paint quite a lot. Then about six years ago, a young young gentleman in Australia started up his own 3D printing. Okay, I'm not using mentioning his name because that's not fair on you. But he he said to me, "Oh, I saw his figures and I said, mate, you need a decent figure painter because it was basic painting." And he said, "Oh, I know one." I said, "Well, who's that?" And he said, "You." And that led one to another. He then got me to do samples. 
I did samples for people. I put it up. They didn't do anything. And then all of a sudden he got a special order for a gentleman who was a, one of his better clients, he spent a lot of money with him. And I said, oh, I'll do that for you. And I posted it online. And I posted it on all my ON30, because I'm a black sheep, ON30 uh, pages, and it took off. We didn't realize it was going to be that. I used all my skills to do paint uh, train figures as I would paint a historical figure, um, a wargaming figure, a Napoleonic figure. And then this has led to, oh, a couple of, I did my first proper order off you. A couple of years ago, we did some samples and that didn't didn't do anything. And then a couple of, I ordered some stuff off you, some things I wanted, some objects. And then we started talking and then we went, you asked whether I would paint for you. And that's the exciting part. And that's part the announcement. Is, yeah. So um, I am thrilled to announce that Ian, who is the most talented figure painter that I've ever seen, uh, will be painting mini prints figures, which is something people have asked me for for ages. So I started this scanning two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, other than Model U in the UK, I was the only other guy doing it. They started uh, years ago. They Maybe were the Australian. Years ago. What's that? There's an Australian guy called Andy Ian. Yeah, oh, Andy Ian. That's right. So the three of us. So I started yeah. here a couple of years ago. Uh, certainly the first guy on this side of the, of the oh, yeah. continent to do it. And um, people always ask me, will you paint them? And I love painting figures. Nowhere mm. near as good as you. Nowhere, nowhere even close. Um, but uh, I thought, you know what? I, I, I love it, but it just... I got to keep these machines running. So mm. um, Mike is painting the objects. So I'm showing this slide now to people because one of the most common requests I get is, are they painted? And I was able to find uh, Mike in Toronto near me, who is a fantastic object painter. And I've included this option. So right now, when you go to the Mini Prints website, you, you pick the scale and uh, HO, S or O, and all mini prints are available in HO, S or O scale. So everything I make is in those three scales, most in N, but I don't paint, I don't offer the N scale ones painted because you have to have a very special set of eyes and skills to paint an N scale, but, but we'll talk. Um, and, uh, the objects have been a big hit. A lot of people really like them. But I'm thrilled to announce that now, and this is why I spent last night till midnight doing, if you pick any of the mini-me figures, not only can you pick the scale, H, O, S, or O scale, but you can now pick whether or not you would like them painted. And I think the plan is going to be, I will, maybe it's once a month to start, once every two weeks, I will ship you a box of all the figures that people would like painted. You can paint them send them back to me. I, of course, will send you a transfer, financial transfer, and uh, and then send people out their painted figures. So we have to work out all the sort of the, the, the logistics of it, but uh, I'm so excited that, you know, people, people, now the gentleman wearing the Australian hat and holding a beer, second from the end there, is mm -hmm. Artie. Boss America model rail running, um, who I think is, yeah, and and I mean, it doesn't make sense. He's I don't know where are you, Artie. You're not uh, you're not super far away, I don't think. Uh, yeah, so we'll figure out how he can get it direct. So we won't go Australia, we won't go Toronto, Australia, Australia, Toronto, Toronto, Australia. But I think you've already painted Artie right there, holding the beer. So that's your first Australian figure right there. Sounds to me like you've got a customer already. <laughs> that one's already been sold. Oh, has it? Yeah, it's very similar to a. Um, I'm very friendly with the guys who are running the Harrisburg show that's on t this weekend. 
Oh, right. And yeah, one of the guys says, oh, that's like my mate. And he says, can you put it in the box? So it's already sold. That one's already, that's already, I can't even show you that one that I've got because he, he's already in a packet. He's, he's ready. He's, he's, I'll, 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 I'll pay you when I turn up. And that's the other announcement. I will be in the US. In okay, tell June. us. Yep, on the second weekend of June. So the Saturday is the first. I fly into the US on the first. I'm flying into Dallas. But then the Thursday, I'm flying up to uh, Pennsylvania at Harrisburg. And there's a big show run by Al Judy, who's very well known in the Oscar, used to run a shop, um, now promotes ON30 all around. He runs a show a couple of times a year. Well, his current show is this weekend. And then okay. next weekend, uh, next in June, I'll be there. I will be demonstrating figure painting. I've got about 15 guys that already want to steal my ideas and how at a thing. Um, you've actually wet, met one of my friends, um, Marty Jenkins, up in. Oh, of course. Yeah, Marty. I've, Marty, I've scanned but, Marty. Yeah. We have a Marty that you can paint. Hang on. I've just got a friend turn up. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, my men's shit. Close that. That's That's fine. Fine. Um, so th th this is the sort of thing. Um, I've actually, we were sort of saying where I go from. This is, I brought, I've got some things up. These are, here, let me you let me put your full screen. Hang on. Yeah. There you go. Right. This is the first thing that started me in model railroads. This is a little um, local um, engine shed, uh, a station that was on a narrow gauge line, eighty kilometres from me. It is thirty inch. It's a thirty inch line, and my father and I built it together with my brother uh, in nineteen seventies. Um, that's S scale. That is actually S scale because Dad started in S scale because he was trying to do the two foot six. And then he decided, hey, why don't we try something different? And then he said, I want to get out of H.O. It's too small. He was doing H.O. three, three foot, big America, had beautiful American stuff, all the brass and all that sort of thing. And I wasn't really interested. I was painting my figures. And then he said, why don't we go to O scale? You can do your um, your figures, and I will do go up larger. And it's a HO mechanism, so it's cheaper, and we'll just scratch build on top of that. So, because I'm a, a crazy O scale ON30 guy. Oh, wow. That's that beautiful. is. That's with, with a mini me. That is actually from a different manufacturer. He actually. Because you can't scan me because I have to be over there. He scanned well, me in Australia. You know, maybe you maybe in June, July. Did you say June or July? June. June. Okay. So that's what that is named after my my late father. That's that loco is named Jim. We often named our locos, and they were always a lot of in Queensland. Our cane locos, a lot of them were green. So I I have a thing, and the guys are starting to get to know me. Oh, it's no good. It's not green. The Lyco's not green. I, I paint my Lyco's green. And then I... So, I got heard... A little... Oh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I know. So well, Artie, and go, I know. Well, and go, go get a mate over there. Live, uh, staying there at the moment. Artie, Artie is only 11 hours from you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's just getting through Sydney. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The, the, it's kind of like Australia is very similar to Canada in as much as it is. It, it, the distances are vast. I mean, oh. for me, you know, for me to go out to Vancouver, it's like a three day drive. It is. Know? Yes. I traveled from um, Jasper to Toronto on the, on the Canadian. Oh, I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. Uh, we went up through uh, the Rocky mountain here for two days um, and uh, stayed at Banff. Lake Louise, you know, the classics, laid in the Fairmonts and all that sort of thing in 2011. So, oh, like yeah, I you. understand. I also have a friend who, who lives in the um, UK who's a Canadian, and he said, yeah, 
we get it because he says I drive for 10 hours and I don't get out of my state or province whereas you can go he says I'm in Europe 10 10 hours I mean I've gone through 10 countries yeah 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 yeah, yeah. We, we understand distances um yeah, I want I to thought... address something that the collaborators have said yeah um shipping is not as bad as you think no so one of the things that I'm thinking about and I do flat rate shipping so all mini prints uh from Canada to the U.S. are flat rate eight bucks U.S. Mm. Um, and, uh, interestingly, Canada to Canada is more expensive than Canada to the U S and, uh, <laughs> I can do flat rate to the U S and eight bucks. But one of the things that I'm thinking, and this is one of the things that we, we need to work out. So, I mean, you could go on right now to the mini prints website and purchase a figure unpainted. You'll get the 20% off sale. Uh, and I will ship it to the U S for eight bucks you can go on and buy a painted figure and then i will need to figure out how to get it to ian and how ian gets it back to me and then i will ship it to you for eight bucks uh the two things that ian and i are going to need to talk about are how frequently we do this i'm betting mm. that if i send a bunch of them to him on a somewhat regular basis that it's not going to be a money issue. It's more a time issue. Yeah. So I can send stuff to Ian pretty, pretty decent price. Mm. Um, and I think the issue is going to be, and this is something that Ian and I will talk about. And this is a good place to end this segment. And I'm going to bring on our next guest in a minute. Mm. But one of the things that Ian and I will figure out, and a lot of this depends on the demand is on what basis, like what's the turnaround time going to be? So one of the things that I need to think about is, okay, you order a uh, painted figure. To, you know, I will print it. I will bulk ship a bunch to Ian. He will paint them, send them back to me. And I've got to think that I'm not worried about the shipping cost as much as this is not going to be something that people are not going to get their figures within two weeks. People, This is going to be something where people are going to have to You'll be patient, and it's more a time issue, I would think, than a money issue. It's about four weeks. Two weeks from me, two weeks from you. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, this is exactly. so exciting, Ian. I am so mm. thrilled. Um, you already have – so we've already got your first customer. Oh, look at them. They look fantastic. Look at those. So if people want to meet you, they can meet you where and when? Okay. It's the second weekend in June. Okay. At the, at the Harrisburg, um, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, at L. Yep. Judy's O.N. Narrow Gauge, O. Scale Narrow Gauge Meet uh, Weekend in uh, New Hope Church, I think it is, in Harris, okay. Harrisburg. He, no, uh, I will be there. I will be there in May for uh, Sparky's meet and greet. Yep. Don't know whether I'll be able to get back down in June, but a lot of it depends on the. You know, I got to keep the machines running. I mean, don't get me wrong. I always want to. It's way more fun to do a road trip uh, down to uh, see trains uh, than it is to uh, sit here and feed the 3D printers. But but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe well, um, maybe I can figure out if I have a whole bunch of mini me figures to hand deliver to you, save saving time and postage. Maybe that'll justify it, and then you can just bring them all back and paint them. Well, the, you know, you never know, and also um, you'll be actually quite scared how quickly I actually paint figures. I can put I can put five or six figures out in an hour. Well, you've had a lot. You've said ni since nineteen eighty one. How many figures? Okay, last question, and then I'm gonna yep. bring our next guest on. How many figures do you think you've painted since then? Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand figures. Yep. Wow. Well, Ian, thank you. I am thrilled beyond belief to to know that you will be painting mini me figures. This is very very exciting. It is. We'll talk later. All right. Thank you for being part of the birthday broadcast. My pleasure. All right. See you soon. All right, everyone. That was great. All right. The next guest 
and I'm only five minutes behind schedule. This is amazing. Um, the next guest is a very, 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 very good friend of mine, a collaborator, someone who I have, whoops, let me get his slide up and running. I think you will all know who I'm talking about as soon as I show this. I'm going to add him in. Hello, Nick of ITLA. Hello, Bernard, and happy birthday. Hope everything's going well. Thank you. Here, let's just do the two of us. Um, I am thrilled that you could join for the birthday party because we are about, and for everyone who's on, because I know that everybody tuned in to win. So <laughs> you have a fantastic, you've donated a fantastic gift for this this amazing uh, raffle giveaway sweepstakes. I don't know what we're going to call it. Uh, that uh, that everyone is tuned in for. But before we get to that, and I think we'll probably do that draw in about 15 minutes, if people are wondering, um, tell me about yourself. I'm not big on introducing people. I let people introduce themselves. <laughs> well, I was expecting a big uh, hurrah, though. But uh... All right. What, what, <laughs> you okay. know what I forgot to get? I forgot to get those things that you blow that go like, Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, here, let me... <laughs> There you go. You're introduced. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Well, first all of all, right. cheers and, and happy birthday. I'm drinking my ITLA beer. Oh, look at you. You've got branded beer. You, you, <laughs> I can't say the word. I didn't think to put a sticker on mine. Hang on. I found my, I found my coaster, eh? There you go. Perfect. <laughs> cheers. Perfect. Well, there you cheers go. Cheers and happy birthday. Glad to be part of it tonight, Bernard. And uh, glad to, glad to, provide a little bit of uh, something for everybody from ITLA and, and spare no expense for our, our good friends at uh, Mini Prince. So, well, before uh, we get to the kit you're giving away and the kit you're working yeah. on, tell me a bit about ITLA. I see a, a big banner behind you and some buildings and who are you? Yeah, so, well, here I'm down in my, I guess I'm down in the basement and uh, this is kind of like the studio or the, or the headquarters for ITLA. And um, if you haven't seen uh, who we are, I, I encourage you to go check our website out, itlascalemodels.com. Uh, we are a manufacturer of laser cut wood kits and the products you see behind me are examples of what we manufacture. And uh, the banner up on the wall behind me is, uh, is really who we are. ITLA stands for Imagine That Laser Art. And if anybody remembers that old company, uh, 2008 through 2012, uh, they ran under that name. And then uh, I was, uh, my wife and Renee and I were lucky enough to be able to take the company over in 2012 and, um, and move it forward to where we are today. Uh, so it started as um, kind of a, I don't know, I would call it a retirement gig uh, while I was still working full time. And that lasted eight years, I think, while I was working full time. And then uh, retired and then took it over, uh, obviously, 100 uh, percent since uh, 20, uh, actually 2019. And then uh, so now, you know, you can work seven days a week, uh, 16 hours a day for about two dollars an hour. It's great. You know, yeah, yeah, you know how it is, Bernard. I'm yeah. just kidding. But but, um, but it's fun to be able to enjoy your passion in the hobby. I mean, I'm a model railroader. Uh, ever since I was a kid, just like everybody else, I'm sure on this call is, and uh, and from that um, that passion has grown, you know, ITLA scale models and and a lot of what you see uh, behind me and um, uh, my layout that you can't see is kind of dusty these days because uh, most of my time goes into the business. Your, but, layout, um, is, your layout is spectacular. Now, are you part of double headers? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. So I'm a little bit further um, west than those guys, about an hour away. But okay. uh, no, I'm not. I'm not on the tour per se. So uh, I think and I'd need you, a little bit of time before I got onto that to that level of uh, showing showing the layout. I visited you last year on the way to St. Louis. I think you did. Yes, you did. And you'll probably get another visit from me this year on my way to St. Louis. For sure. Um, and I remember looking at your dusty layout and there was a car that had fingerprints on them. And True. I went to touch those, that car. And you, I believe you swatted my hand away. <laughs> Something like that. And, and that car, that car is now in my, uh, in a glass case uh, so that that doesn't accidentally get touched again. So the story behind <laughs> that, 
<laughs> yeah, tell tell us who who came to see your layout this yeah, what, was yeah. it this so, summer or last summer. It was uh, last summer, yeah. So if I don't know if anybody can read that signature up Here, there, let me but, make it full screen. See if yeah. they can. I don't yeah. know. Anybody oh, yeah, maybe that? they can see it. Yeah. So so we were fortunate enough, uh, and we have been fortunate enough for years to have um, a certain uh, famous model railroader as a customer of ours. And uh, over the past few years, uh, he's kind of become a bit of a friend. And uh, he's, he's um, you know, we spent some time chatting back and forth and we provide lots of product for him to uh, model as he's out on the road. And uh, one, um, one summer, uh, this recent summer, he was um, putting on a concert at a, a local uh, city here, London, Ontario. Uh, so this he invited would be a, a singer, a British rock singer of sorts? This, this would be somebody that is apparently a, has been knighted as a sir. So his name is Sir Rod sir. Stewart. Sir okay. Rod Stewart. So you said um, the name, the name that yes, the name. Be yeah. <laughs> so we've been fortunate enough to have him as a, as a client, and a customer for a long time, and we've been doing a little bit of custom work for him, and providing him with products so that he can build uh, his skyscrapers and his and urban scenery out on the road. So um, anyway, he had um, invited us to a local concert. Uh, we were uh, you know fortunate enough to go and and spend some time with him backstage. And uh, just out of, you know, just sitting on a couch, having a beer with Rod Stewart, like think about that for just a second. And uh, so, you know, struggling for things to talk about, exactly having your beer, uh, <laughs> struggling for things to talk about and, and you know, and not sound too much like a train geek. Um, you know, I said, hey, Rod, if you ever are in town or nearby again, you want to see um, our operation, you're more than welcome to come over. So uh, this was a Saturday night and uh, he said, hey, oh, okay, how about tomorrow? And we've, you know, Renee and I fell off the couch and what? Serious? Yes, serious. We'll, uh, we'll show up at your place tomorrow, 10 a.m. kind of thing. So long story short, uh, he paid us a visit here uh, in, in our home and uh, saw the layout, saw that, you know, the business and operation, that kind of thing. And the box car that Renee, or that, sorry, that uh, Bernard is speaking of, uh, he spent, he spent time looking at all, all this stuff here in the basement. And he's a very inquisitive guy and he's, he likes to touch things. So he took the dusty old box car that I had on a siding and he decided to wing it up and down the rails a little bit, to see how smooth my track work was. And he was complimentary of very smooth track work. And now so that pass, box car passed the test. That's correct. And now that boxcar has got his fingerprints on the roof of it. So uh, that's the boxcar that Bernard almost eradicated those fingerprints uh, with his own on. So long story so, short. So that's, yeah. So so Heath, I don't know if you know Heath from uh, Humanity Junction, would like to know whether he needs to be a famous singer to come and visit your shop. Yeah, for sure. You got to have some form of um, of fame and fortune uh, before you can come to ITLA. So no auto tune or auto tone <laughs> or whatever. You actually well, have to can, like carry a note. Yeah, Heath, you can submit uh, submit a talent video to me, and I'll uh, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick and I have known each other for a, a good number of years, a few years, we have, yeah. and we yeah. work together. And yep. I have um, a picture here. I don't know if, I mean, I'm, I'm um, always technologically challenged, but I have a picture here and this is your new tri-state fabricators HO scale building. Is that correct? That is correct. You're right. And it is massive. It's a huge building. It'll, it'll stretch 36 inches if you wanted to build it as a flat, like in a flat configuration. Wow. And the cool thing is, it's loaded, right? So this is the this is the cool thing for everybody listening. This is the uh, neat collaboration that that Bernard and I had uh, when when I was designing this kit. It's actually been in design um, on and off for two years. So I was finally able to get it off the ground for the Amherst show this past January. But Bernard and I were uh, working on back and forth on some components, some three D printed components, and we ended up coming up with a really cool. Uh, way of serving up about uh, was about like 45 different details. I think it was Bernard. Yeah. And, um, and those are included in every kit. And basically it was an opportunity to allow her to uh, morph the era a little bit too. So some guys want to model in the transition era. Some guys want to model a little more into the, you know, 60s, even the eighties. 
So the details of Bernard and I uh, came up with for this model can cover all of those eras. So the, the neat thing is this kit comes loaded with 3D parts. It comes loaded with laser cut details and parts, and you can configure it the way you like in about 12 different footprints on top of that. So um, just a great example about, you know, of collaboration and working with Bernard and, and some of the great 3D printing he can do. Um, and it's just been a, it's been a great kit and very, very popular. And I'm, I'm really proud of how it's turned out. And Bernard, I got to thank you for your help on it for sure. No, no, thank you. And, and I can't wait to build it. It will be the first, although I don't know whether it's going to be the first big kit I'm going to build because it's, I'm a, I think I need to practice on something, but uh, no, David okay. Green's ready we'll to order that one. Yeah, so, uh, no problem. Available on our website. Yeah, Bruce That's Wilson sure. said it looked great. So Bruce Wilson uh, saw it at Springfield and said it looked great. And yeah, it did. Thanks, it Bruce. looked amazing. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, so um, we've had a lot of fun. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, I said we had a lot of fun working on stuff together. So uh, again, you know, Four years. I, I can't believe it's been four years in your business already. Bernard. I know. It feels like 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's seven days a week. I'll do that to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm actually 23 years old. <laughs> it's yeah. Just, you know. <laughs> exactly. You and me both. Yep. Yeah, so for sure. So without further ado, on, go ahead. You're on tonight for a bunch of reasons. Um, you're on tonight because you're awesome and your kid, is, your kid is beautiful. What I'd love to do, you very kindly sent me a copy of that kit. And I think mm -hmm. maybe not next month, but maybe in a future broadcast, uh, we should do an unboxing or get deeper into yeah. it. That um, sounds great. Love to. Steve has mentioned something, which I should uh, bring up. Uh, that, that Nick and I have collaborated on a number of things. And the outhouse, if you have one of our mini prints talking outhouses, uh, that I have built that. Uh, so <laughs> I will go from the ITLA outhouse, which is this big and four or five pieces, straight to the main attraction. <laughs> go big so, or go home, Bernard. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Jennifer's here. Hi, Jennifer. Yeah. Welcome. Um, Eric Penfield, who I scanned in his full uh, firefighter gear, has said that your sign with Rod's signature is part of his Springfield trip slideshow. Oh, cool. So a Thank lot you. of people here have have seen you. Um, and, and yeah, Jennifer, I agree. I'm going to put this comment up because that was a fun collaboration. And one of the things that I really enjoy about this business is collaborating with other like-minded small model railroad manufacturers like Nick, like Chris from Home Shops, who is on his way to to see you right now, Jennifer, in Denver at the uh, the Colorado show. Um, uh, so I think it's just after eight o'clock, and I think that we should probably give some stuff away. So let's, um, I think we'll start off with, um, we'll do four draws. There are four prizes. Let me tell everyone a little bit about this. Um, I'm giving away a year of the mini prints of the month club. So that's the mini box logo you see there. So I have a number of people who receive mini prints of the month club selections, which is a box that they get every month that has about $40, $50 retail worth of mini prints in it. Uh, that is HO scale only. So the winner of it will win uh, it in HO scale. If you are not an HO scale modeler, we will figure out what we do next. So that's prize number one. Then I will do a drawing for the two home shop cars. Uh, one of them is the Virginia and Atlantic. I think it's an 89-foot auto parts box car. And then the Texas and Gulf Northern. Uh, did I say that right? I don't know. I probably didn't. I'll have to go get the car in a minute. Uh, the, that's Chris Palmieri's road. 
And uh, then the, the final of the four prizes, the four draws, will be the main attraction. That will be your ITLA uh, all-state model machine parts kit. So tell us a little bit about the grand prize. <laughs> Oh sure. So that that's a great example of a kit that's been uh, it's been a very popular one for us over the years as well. And it is something you can configure in three different footprints. Uh, the L-shaped, um, as you can see there, uh, pictured with the office bump out to the right. It'll also build with the office bump out to the left, okay. or it'll build as a shallow relief that's about 19 and a half inches long. Uh, which is a very popular look. Um, a lot of guys like that for their shelf layouts or modules. And, uh, and it's just about an inch and a half deep, so it doesn't take up a lot of space on your layout. Loaded, again, with some cool details, all wood construction. Um, a great kit if you're really into, uh, if you like to give uh, laser cut kits a try, this is a good one for you. And this one, I'm happy to say, because actually it's interesting, I got quite a few comments on how everything was HO scale and that did not sit well with our N scale friends. So I'm happy to say that this is kind of the grand prize because what's the value on that? Like 195 US? Uh, one, 139.99. Okay, so 139.99 US. Yeah. Um, that one is available in N scale, correct? Correct, it is, yes. So the winner of that, if they are a smaller modeler, we can we can offer that to them. We can accommodate it for sure, no problem. Okay, at all. great. So what I'm gonna do, Nick, and this is this is gonna completely destroy the the time space continuum. I'm going into a plugin on my website called Raffle Press. Okay. And Raffle Press is the giveaway uh, plugin. And it tells me that 229 people entered the contest. Uh, and it tells me that there were 485 entries because there were multiple ways to enter. So you could enter by doing other things. If I click on the fourth birthday celebration right now, it's going to allow me to draw the prizes. Do you want to show us, Bernard, or is that going to blow things up? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. I first have to figure out how to do it. So details. So let me go back. Uh, actions. No. Okay. Back. Details. Help. Save. Wow. Ah! Give me one second here. Needs winners. One needs winners. Okay. So I'm clicking on needs winners. Ended needs winners. Here we go. How many winners do you want to pick? Yeah. Why don't I show this? Although I don't know whether I can show it because it shows people's email addresses. Oh, okay. Well, I just thought I'd ask. No worries. Yeah. So how many winners do you want to pick? I want to pick four. Well, I'll pick one winner first. So I'll do, ooh, I should say four winners, shouldn't I? One, one per prize. Winner, if I say one, it might, okay, I'm going to pick four winners. Um, let me see if I can share this without showing emails. I don't think so. I, I would have to show everyone's email, which... Probably is not a good idea. Not too cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to choose the winners now. You're going to have to trust me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a Heath. I should, hey, Heath, do you want to pick them? <laughs> Are you still online, Heath? Um, how do I remotely get you to pick the winners? Because there'll be blue smoke and, and all sorts of fun things. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Tom. I'm glad you got your order. Okay. So I'm going to choose the winners now. And what I'm going to do, there are going to be four winners. And we're going to say winner number one is a mini box. Winner number two, Virginia Atlantic. Uh, winner number three, Texas Gulf Northern. Winner number four, the main attraction. If you are winner one, two, or three, which I will announce in a moment, and you win an HO scale prize, and you are an N scaler, then you can whine and complain to me and we will figure something out. Um, the main prize is available in both. So let me choose winners now. I'm clicking the button and crashing my website. So what happened? Oh, okay. I've got four winners. Right. Winner number one. This is great. 
Um, yeah, maybe is there a way to show this without the yeah, here I know what I'm gonna do. Hang on. Da 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 screen snap. And how do I do that? All right, well, winner number one, winner of the mini box, mini prints monthly, uh, mini prints of the month club in HO scale, Stephen Russo. R U S S O. Congratulations, Stephen. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the confetti <laughs> cannon. Damn. Yeah. Sorry. Um, do N scalers really complain a lot? Eh, that's a comment. Well, yeah, you know, we could that that could be a whole session, actually. I could do a show. <laughs> uh N scalers, they don't complain a lot, they just want everything that um is uh available in HO, which is not always technically possible, although I will try my best. So congratulations, Stephen Russo, uh, for your mini prints of the month club. The winner of the Virginia and mm. Atlantic 89 foot auto parts box car from Home Shops, Trevor LeFleur. Congratulations, Trevor. Uh, winner of the, uh, I can't read that, Texas and Gulf Northern, I believe, uh, Michael Shaw. Congratulations, Michael Shaw. And the winner of the grand prize, the ITLA Allstate Machine Parts Kit. Do you want to say his name out, Nick? You got to tell me. <laughs> Richard Wenzel. Richard -E Wenzel. N-T-Z-E-L. All right. Congratulations, Richard. Richard. So there are our four winners, Stephen you won the Mini Prince of the Month Club, Trevor and Michael, the uh, cars, Richard, the uh, main prize of the fantastic kit in H O or, or N. And uh, everybody does win because everybody entered the contest and hopefully had fun. And uh, of course, you can still use the 20% off code uh, at uh, miniprints.com code party because it is a party and thank you thank you everyone for entering and I want to do more of this um, I did a spin to win last month and it was a lot of fun so let's do another prize giveaway for some Henderson beer merch next month and thank you everybody let me see do i have any more slides i do actually hang tight let's pull up there we go i put a slide up stickers um thank you everyone who sent stickers in um i got a around the layout podcast operating crew member sticker thank you very much for that um, I try and send stickers out in most mini prints of the month uh, club boxes or orders when I have them. I don't have any stickers right now because I've been doing the coasters. Probably come up with some more stickers. If anyone has sticker ideas, I'm running out of sticker ideas, so I'm very interested in sticker ideas. Um, I think that's pretty much. I've got one more thing I want to show you. Do you want to see what I've been working on? Kind of top secret. Sure. But I will show you. Do you remember I had the, what I'm calling, um, uh, beneath the tracks? Yep. Did you, you see that? Yep. So yes. I came up with the, the, there was, well, I didn't come up with it, actually. Spencer came up with it, who you know. Uh, the mm -hmm. well. And right, then yep. Spencer and I were thinking of like what other things we could do. So there was the bomb shelter. Right. So cool, yeah. we've come up, Spencer and I together have come up with the next and third beneath the tracks. Do you want to, do you want a little look-see? Yeah, please. That'd be awesome. So you like a, yeah, like a, like an ice cave or what is that? Yeah. The crystal ice cave. So this wow. is 
we we thought it would be fun to put the mini prince dragon in on it so yeah it's Neat. about it's something that you can let me get my ruler where's my ruler oh hang on i'm gonna get my ruler okay So it's four inches by 2.25 inches, and it's about two inches deep. And the Very idea behind cool. it is you cut a little hole in your fascia. Yeah. And then you have this really cool scene that you could potentially, you know, backlight. Oh, yeah. That's cool. It's 3D oh. printed, resin 3D printed in a clear resin. And it's hard to see, but in here are steps. Here, let me get my... Oh, okay. I can kind of see them, yeah. Handy dandy So you can see the steps there. So basically, that you can create this hole. There's steps that go all the way up there and then down there. So okay. you can create this sort of little sort of fascia, ice crystal... Little ice cave. crystal space. Yeah. Yeah, so you can, in your great fascia. Place, yeah. Great place for your mini-me's, too. Exactly. You know, you could put a little figure in there or you could put a dragon yep. in there or it's just like a little sort of interesting cutaway. Yeah. So this cool. is this is the next beneath the tracks. Very cool. Um, I can make this glow in the dark resin. I can totally make this glow in the dark resin, which would be a really cool idea. But what I what it is right now is it's just clear resin. And then I have this really cool sort of, you know, just like one of these yeah. lights. Have you Although done a, was, Bernard, have you done a Yeti yet? I have well, I've done Bigfoot, but I've not done, actually a Yeti would be perfect for that, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. So, yeah, so that's what's coming up next. A Yeti is a great idea. I will start work on the Yeti tomorrow. <laughs> this mini print broadcast brought to you by <laughs> ITLA and Yeti. <laughs> um, yeah, I like stuff like this. I think this is fun. Um, one of the cool. things I was thinking is maybe tinting the clear resin, sort of an amethyst color. Yeah, yeah we can do really Superman, neat. although I don't do licensed figures, Steve. So Steve is suggesting uh, Superman because this is total Fortress of Solitude stuff. So wow. Superman not included, Steve. But yeah, <laughs> Adam did a beautiful dragon. Um, if you haven't been on the uh, Mini Prince Modelers group on Facebook, uh, Dave, I can do it in N. Yes, I can. I will definitely be able to do this in N. Where I'm going to get in trouble is if people want it in O scale, because that will be a massive print. So I can do no. this in N. I can do this in HO, and I can do this in S. I can probably do it in um, O scale, but it'll be one massive, massive print. Or two print. parts, Bernard. Can you do it in two yeah. parts? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of crystalline. There's a lot of crystalline. Um, right. Structure, structure in there, so mm -hmm. you can see if I tilt it. There's some. Yeah, it is really pretty, nice, sort of crystals cool. yeah. in there. Very cool. Yeah, so trying to come up with some fun things. Um, cool. Yeah, this is going to be, I think this is going to be really fun. Sasquatch Cave, um, all sorts of things. So I guess I've burned things, I've announced things, I've drunk things, we've given away <laughs> things. I don't know whether we can do any more. I think this is the this is the end of the broadcast, everyone. It's do you have been any, a good any birthday. last thoughts? It's been a good birthday, Bernard. Congratulations again for four Thank great you. years and, and many, many more. Whoops. Many, many more. I better not show that. Yeah. So, I mean, um, next broadcast will be uh, May. Oh, my goodness. The first, I go live the first Wednesday of every month. The okay, first cool. Wednesday, the first Wednesday of May, May 1st. So the first, I'll be live May 1st, and I guess on that broadcast, I'll talk about the adventures we had in Peabody uh, and uh, what's new, obviously, new mini prints. We'll talk about that. 
Um, hopefully, and I plan to have some Henderson swag to give away from my new sponsor, the brewery across the street. And yeah. thank you everyone for joining. I think this is this has gone really according to party plan. And if anyone has any shows that they think I should be at, let me know. If anyone would like to send stickers. <laughs> are those what? I'm trying to figure out what animal that is. I think those are the, the beavers. I'm assuming that's the mini Prince beaver, which oh, I forgot to show my mascot. I had a mini Prince beaver kicking around somewhere. Although I want a life-size stuffed one, but that's a whole nother story. I need to get the official mascot in here. Thank you, everybody. Um, Heath is on tonight at uh, 9 o'clock. So that's in 40 minutes. So check out Heath. Thank you so much for joining. I will see everybody online. Uh, Bruce, I will be talking about Tomstock closer, but there will definitely be a Tomstock uh, 2024 uh, mention that will be in the May or June, because that's not until July, August. I will also mention, and I'll hint, um, I'm thinking about going to, um, well, I will be at the Rochester NER show in September. That's the Lake Shores uh, Regional Convention. And uh, I will be hopefully going to Long Beach, but they have not said yes. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the NMRA. Long Beach uh, convention. Uh, I've asked whether they would like me to come and set up the scanner. So May 1st, tune in. We'll talk about all the things that are happening in June, July, August, and we'll get into September. And thank you everyone for joining. It's time to go and print something. I'll be awesome. in touch with thanks, all the winners. Thanks That's again. Thank you. And thanks for joining sure. Nick. And You're thanks welcome. for joining Ian. Cheers, Bye, guys. everyone. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. Night, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye.